This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we'll be patterning, cutting, and binding the edges of a woven vinyl flooring to create a gorgeous mat for our galley floor on a powerboat. We will be using Chilowich floor covering fabric from Sayerite. It is a woven vinyl mesh fabric with a padding on the underside. It's great for indoor and outdoor applications, both on a boat and at your home. We are making this mat for a galley floor on this Prestige 500 powerboat. Matt Grant, Vice President of Sayerite, will walk us through the steps. To begin, we will pattern for the flooring using Durascrim pattern material and start marking and cutting it to size to fit the opening we want to cover with flooring. The Durascrim pattern material marks easily with a Sharpie marker and cuts well with scissors. Matt has accomplished the majority of the patterning. Here, he will explain some important points. Okay, so I've got it basically set in place. I've got a few gaps in a couple areas and a couple overlapping, but I can get it nice and flat now. Now I'll come back and I'll trim out anything to make it as square as possible, and I'll put marks on it to say that I need to square a particular area in the pattern because I'm gonna use a straight edge when I go to cut all these edges. So my carpet will only be as good as my pattern. Make your pattern the best that you possibly can. Then we're gonna take this pattern, transfer it to our flooring, our vinyl woven flooring, and we're going to reduce the size of the vinyl woven flooring a little bit to leave a perimeter around it. And we'll show you that next. Thanks, Matt. Now we'll use that pattern to cut our flooring. Okay, so we have our pattern and we're back to our work area. And this is the pattern for the galley floor. And uh, fairly good sized boat, doesn't look like a very big galley, but this is all we have. Uh, and we'll be taking this pattern and transferring it to our woven marine flooring uh, so that we can create a nice mat for the galley floor. Uh, but what I wanna show you here is that since the space is somewhat confined, you ultimately don't cut things perfectly. And you'll notice that I've written fill void here and I've shown that I want a 90 degree cut here. So I've made a number of notes on the pattern that help me to determine what I need to do to true up this pattern because the better your pattern is, the better the finished job is gonna be. I've also marked dots in a number of spots that, are, that I know are connect two points and I've done those dots inside the outer pattern because we want this floor piece, this, uh, this mat, to be uh, smaller than the well that it fits in. Remember, this goes in a well, so there are upright edges all the way around uh, the flooring piece. I want it to be about a quarter of an inch to a half inch short all the way around so that it drops in nicely and doesn't have any, any um, uh, loose puckering to it because it's too tight in any one direction. So, first thing we wanna do, because we want a perfect pattern when we transfer this to our flooring material, is we wanna fill in these voids. So I'm just gonna take some scrap Durascrim material and I'm gonna find each of the void areas and I'm gonna fill them in with a little bit of the material. So we've gotta fill one in up here, one, one down where we were just looking and it looks like that's pretty much it. I'll just use some regular scotch tape and we'll start taping these pieces in. Okay, so we have a couple of points here that I put as good points of reference. And I'm gonna line those up. And we'll just strike a line right there. Get a nice straight edge. And then here, we had a point of reference right there and right there. So we'll join those. I'm gonna skip the curved corners for now. We'll come back to those. Now for curves, 
Uh, you can get fancy if you have a tool like this, but it's really not that critical. You could freehand this too. And that's the curve that I need there. Him. So this is our finished pattern. So now we just want to cut on these lines. And if, uh, if I wanted to take this back to the boat to confirm, I'm pretty confident we're good. I could lay this in the boat after cutting my pattern out just to make sure that, that I've got a perfect pattern. So we have our pattern all cut out and we have our woven, uh, premium woven vinyl flooring or a luxury vinyl woven flooring. Um, and uh, this is one that had a couple of uh, flaws in it and it's a roll end. Uh, Sailrite doesn't send out flawed material so we're gonna use it for this project uh, uh, for the video purpose. And uh, let's uh, uh, roll this out on our table. And what you can see here is, is that you've got a number of arrows pointing which direction the weave goes. And that's important if you're gonna have multiple pieces coming together, you wanna make sure that all of the patterns have the arrows going the same way. But we only have one piece here, so we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, notice my pattern still says up, so I need to flip my pattern over. Now on the edges, you wanna make sure that you get into material that is good. So you'll notice here that we have a little bit of a separation for about an inch on the edge. So I don't wanna come all the way to the edge. I'm gonna come inside the edge by about an inch and a half. This edge is fine, so I can bring this all the way down. The stuff's expensive, so we don't wanna waste any of it. And we wanna get it square to the weave. So in other words, I don't wanna twist the pattern diagonally. I want the weave to run uh, with the fore and aft direction of the boat in this case. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now all we need to do is transfer our pattern uh, to the backside of this uh, padded flooring material. I find this easier to do with the ruler, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna put some points on straight sections, and I'll fill in any curved areas like so. And then I have a point there, and I know that's a straight, so I'll go to there. And then I'll go to this point. Now my pattern is already going to grow because of the binding that we're gonna put around it. So when we cut this, we wanna cut most of the black pin mark, if not all of the black pin mark out so that we're just not, not knowingly expanding the size of the pattern. Our pattern is marked and now we're just gonna use shears to cut it out. And remember, I'm cutting out most of the black. If Actually, I'm gonna cut out all of the black, so I'm gonna go inside the black. Okay, so we're all cut out now, pretty easy to cut with scissors. And if I flip this over, I really have a mat that I could, I could put on the boat right now, and it would serve the purpose, but the edging eventually will start to unravel and fray on this as you walk on it, especially if they're unprotected edges. So we're gonna actually put a binding all around this piece. Now, since this is a fairly small piece, I would like to point out that you're gonna have some scrap material and this stuff is expensive enough, I hate to see people waste it. One of the things that you need on a boat is a shelf, shelf liners uh, to keep uh, your, your stuff from rattling in on the shelves and uh, also just to protect your cabinets. This is one that we cut from a normal shelf liner material that you would get at Walmart or, or some box store like that. And the problem with it is, is that they still move around. It's supposed to be tacky, but they move around. This material is so dimensionally stable, it won't move around. So I suggest you use your, you create patterns and you create shelf liners out of your, your leftover uh, flooring final woven flooring material. Our shelf liners do not need binding around the edges, but we've decided to install binding on our floor mat. That's coming up next. We could put any binding trim on this, but I think a black's gonna look good with it and certainly won't show dirt. 
This is a one and a quarter inch width binding. It's got a, its edges already turned under, so basically all that has to happen is it folds in half and it caps the raw edges of the material before you sew it down. Now we have a special binder device that helps to facilitate sewing this binding on, but before we go to the sewing machine and we, we start that process, it's a good idea to look at your piece and decide what you're gonna do. Because binder attachments don't handle corners outside or inside corners that well, unless they're large radiuses. And we don't have any large radiuses here. So let's look at our pattern. And since we have a lot of 90 degrees, 90 degree corners, I think what we wanna do is we want to run a straight binding piece down this edge, cut it flush with the edges, come back and run a straight binding piece on this edge and on this edge, then come in and run a straight binding piece here and a straight binding piece here. Then I'm gonna suggest that we hand work these corners, perhaps use the binder in this stretch or basting tape to hold it on, hand work this corner. And then over here, what we'll do is we'll leave our binding a little long at this point so we can create sort of a mitered effect at this corner so that it looks nice since it's really our only inside 90 degree corner. That's the plan anyway. It's a good idea to formulate one. Rarely do you follow the full plan, but that's what we're gonna try and do. Okay, we've already installed our binder on our sewing machine, and this is a brand new one and a quarter inch binder. And this again is our one and a quarter inch binding. And we basically fold that and feed it into the feeder. And you can see how it comes out of the mouth here. And you wanna pull a chunk out to get it started. And now this is a piece of the scrap that we cut off and we're gonna set up our machine, make sure that we're happy with the way everything is working. So longest stitch length possible for this, straight stitch, center position, and uh, got that needle so that it is positioned roughly, oh, roughly a 16th inside the edge there. I think we should go a little deeper with it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my binder by loosening this thumb screw. So we're gonna slide it to the left a little bit. All right, with it moved, that should push my needle a little further to the right. And now with a black thread, we just need to take a look and see if we're happy with where the stitch is. And I think that looks pretty good. And the stitch quality looks good. Can't see the knots on the bottom, can't see the knots on the top. So let's just run a little bit further and let's pull it out and see what we've got. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a nice trim on the edge of that. Looks good. All right, we're ready to go. Leave your binding long and your material outside of the binding there. And then what we wanna do is we need to make sure that we keep our material into the mouth of the binder. And we're just gonna start sewing. Good. Get a few stitches in the binding. And then I, I have to hold the fabric and feed the fabric in. And I'm gonna put one arm under my assembly and I'm gonna hold the other one over here so I can force the fabric into the mouth. Now, before you go too far, bury your needle and just make sure you're happy with everything. And I think that looks good. Now, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure my binding is free enough to handle the entire edge as I go. And it is. Sew off the edge, lift our presser foot, pull our binder out, just make sure we're still happy with everything. I think that looks great. I'm gonna cut this off long because we're gonna hot knife those edges here in a little bit. And that is our one long edge. I think we said we'd come do these short edges next and since we're in that area, I think I can go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna use my edge hot knife, Sailrite edge hot knife, and I'm just going to heat it up and start trimming away here. Now profilin thread doesn't really 
melt, so you may have to cut those, but that's gonna be sewn under. And we essentially keep working our project in this manner until we get to the curve. So the straight edges are really easy. Here I wanna get a good, decent run on my stitch before I start to feed this in, so I make sure that the binder's in place, because now I'm gonna be dealing with a really thick corner here for a second. So I'm gonna go nice and slow here. And when I get into the corner, I'm even gonna back up. This will just kick the binder out of the way a little bit. You can see that moving back. Just to get some, some additional stitching in the corner and then feed forward. Make sure we're happy with that and I am. Now I'll go back to getting my arm under the assembly and my shoulder in this case, since it's getting longer. Oh, that binder is sweet. Okay, so we have, let's go ahead and continue to do the straight edges off film, and then we'll trim some of the pieces that we need to trim. I'm gonna have to trim this one in order to do this next straight edge, so I'll go ahead and do that again. Same thing we did last time, just with a hot knife. Heat it up and cut it off so that we can sew along it. Okay, we're showing this edge because this is our 90 degree inside corner. And what I wanna do is I wanna cut my material a little bit long, like so. And then I'm gonna get a little bit closer to it and I'm gonna cut a slit where it folds around the edge. So let's go a little bit closer. Can't go too far close, too much closer because of the, the binding will go inside the edge here, but that's gonna tell us where it's gonna end up. So now right at the center, I'm gonna fold this in half. So I'm gonna fold it in half and just gonna cut a wedge right out of the crease. Okay. And now we will continue. Okay, now we have an issue here where we're right up against the binder. And obviously it's not gonna feed in there like that. So what I need to do is I need to uh, raise my needle, lift my foot, and this is the point where I'm gonna have to actually pull the binder back and out of the way. So that's why we like these swing binders. And now I'm gonna come back and you can see how that slit's gonna drop right where it's supposed to drop. And I'm gonna get back under my position, bury my needle, make sure that material is folding nicely and I'm gonna stitch this section by hand. Okay, so now I have an inside curve to do here. We've cut this edge, and actually I'm gonna hot knife that a little bit. I cut that with scissors. Let's just make sure that doesn't ravel on us. So if you scissor cut them, you can just come back. Hit the edge with a little heat, and that'll keep that from coming undone on us. We'll do that as we get around to them. Now what I wanna do here is I wanna pull some binding out of the binder, but leave the binding running through the binder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna work this around this corner manually. But in order to do this, it's really a good idea to use basting tape. So we wanna get some 129 basting tape and we'll put a stick of it on each side in order to bend this on. We've got some half inch basting tape here. So I'm gonna have it over the edge a little bit. Won't hurt a thing because it'll help to hold the binding on right over the edge cap. And it, by the way, if you don't have a binder, you can always do it this way too. It just takes a little bit longer. Oops, there we go. And we'll flip it. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna make this as easy as possible on ourselves. Peel our paper, reveal the glue. Same thing on this side. So. Pull this over here. Remember to pull enough through here, but make sure that you're running it so that when you go to trace, you pull it straight like this so that you're sure that you're applying it in a manner where when it's ready to straighten out, it'll be fine. Okay. 
This is a bias binding tape, so it will stretch. Just takes a little bit of patience to get it in place where you want it. And then you may have to do a little bit of tweaking too. That looks pretty good. Our binder's still out of the way because we're not using it right now. And we're going to sew a little further in than we normally do this time because we want to make sure that we catch those edges. So. Go nice and slow here. Even hand work the machine if you need to. Okay, now we're back to a straightaway. Let's just check to see what we got there. Make sure we caught it all. Oh yeah, we caught it all. That's good, and we're in the edge of the material. That's great. Okay, so now we can swing our bind. Now we can pull this loose binding, and we can swing our binder attachment back into position. Thus, the beauty of a swing away binder. And now I can go back to supporting my material, and we're back to a straightaway until we get to that next curve. Okay, now we're starting to be kicked away. So we're gonna leave our needle buried and we're gonna, we're gonna pull our binder out again. And I think I can get up to this corner by hand. but I think we better go back to basting tape to, get, to head around this corner, but we're just gonna put it on the top side this time. Top side and fold it around the front. Okay. It's gonna be easier if I trim this off. Um, since we're doing this by hand anyway, and we can pull this back, get it out of the way. This is just, again, patience. And if you have to put the basting tape on both sides, you put it on both sides. But you want to get it bent in there so that it's tight against the edge of the material. So that's what I'm fighting with right now. pretty good. Okay, so now we will work it around here. You get to a spot where you need to turn things, bury and pivot on your needle. You'll notice I'm going quite a bit further inside the binding when I do a corner like this, and that's because I want to make sure that I catch both, both edges of the binding if I didn't get it flat like the binder does. Okay, so we have all the edges done, I think in the order that we said we were going to do them, except for this short piece here. And since this is such a short piece, no sense doing this on a binder or on a, with a binder. Instead, we're going to put a couple pieces of basting tape on, one on this side, one over here, and you can see I'm, again, because I'm using a half inch, which is what I had available. Ah, I'm, I'm uh, having it go over the edge, which actually works pretty well because it sticks then right to the edge as well, or to the end cap of the, of the foam material. So I'm gonna fold all that adhesive in there. Okay, so now we've got a good sticky area there. 
I've hot knifed this end so it won't unravel. I'm gonna fold that in half and now I'm just gonna put it roughly where it would be and I'm gonna mark where it joins to the outside edge of the other piece of binding. Now from there here to here, I wanna cut that open in the center, so right here, so we can fold this in half like so and we can mark the edge with the side of our soapstone. And I wanna use my hot knife just to cut right on that line. I don't wanna burn my work table, so I'm just putting another piece of fabric underneath it. There we go, we have a nice slit there and that'll be fine. Okay, basically we're gonna fold this in half and we're gonna feed it up to the point where that slit hits. And now we just sew that in place. Gives you a nice 90 degree angle there. And then we're gonna have to come back and hot, hot knife cut all of these edges. Our final step is to cut off all of these trim pieces. And you know, I think in this particular case, instead of potentially melting through the other edge, I'm gonna scissor cut them first, and then we'll just come back and we'll heat, heat trim them a little bit so we'll get our hot knife nice and hot. Let it go cherry red, there you go. Just pinch it closed after you melt it a little bit. Good, nice, okay. Okay, we put our pattern on this just to confirm the size is right, and I noticed we forgot to cut a strange little notch out. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna cut this out and we're gonna trim this piece as well. But we followed the exact same process that we had done by sticking a piece on by hand, which is what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna cut that away and then I'll, I'll uh, put another piece of binding on that. Okay. Okay. All right, then we're gonna run that over to the sewing machine and we'll sew that. It's just, the key is just to keep working it. Thanks, Matt. All that's left now is to take our flooring, which has binding sewn around the edge, and place it in our opening. If the pattern was cut correctly, the vinyl woven flooring should fit perfectly in the opening of this Power Boats galley floor. And it does. Don't want to use the vinyl flooring? No problem. The same techniques can be used with regular carpeting, and you can still use the one and a quarter inch swing away binder from Sayerite as long as the carpet material will compress to about 5 millimeters in thickness when it's being fed through the binder. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that we used to pattern, cut, and also to bind the edges of this vinyl flooring. As Matt mentioned earlier, if you have leftover vinyl flooring from Sailrite, you can use that to make shelf liners for your boat or home. They're perfect for that application. If you happen to have any questions, be sure to give us a call here at Sayerite or email us. We're glad to help. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.